Himalayas, also known as the Himalaya, are a mountain range in Asia that divides the Tibetan Plateau from the plains of the Indian subcontinent. The mountain range has some of the planet's tallest peaks, including Mount Everest, which is the highest. The Himalayas contain over 100 peaks with elevations more than 7,200 meters. The tallest mountain outside of Asia, Aconcagua in the Andes, is 6,961 meters high. The Himalayas border or traverse five nations, China, Pakistan, India, Nepal, and Bhutan. India, Pakistan, and China disagree over who has sovereignty over the mountain range in the Kashmir area. The Karakoram and Hindu Kush mountains border the Himalayan range on the northwest, the Tibetan Plateau on the north, and the Indo-Gangetic Plain on the south. The Indus, Ganges, and Sampa Brahmaputra, three of the world's main rivers, rise close to the Himalayas. Their combined drainage basin is home to some 600 million people, 53 million of whom reside in the Himalayas. The Himalayas have had a significant impact on the South Asian and Tibetan cultures. The tops of five Himalayan peaks, Kangchenjunga, from the Indian side, Gangkar Pwensum, Mashapuchir, Nanda Devi, and Kailas in the Tibetan Trans Himalaya, are forbidden to climbers because they are revered in Hinduism and Buddhism. The Himalayan mountain range is 2,400 kilometers long and is lifted by the subduction of the Indian tectonic plate into the Eurasian plate. It extends from west to north to east to southeast. Nanga Parbat, its western anchor, is located just south of the Indus River's northernmost curve. Namcha Barwa, its eastern anchor, is located directly west of the Yarlung Sampal River's significant bend. From 350 kilometers in the west to 150 kilometers in the east, the width of the range varies. Temperature, latitude, altitude, and the relative motion of the southwest monsoon are the physical variables that affect climate in any site in the Himalayas. The mountains stretch over 8 degrees of latitude from south to north, from temperate to subtropical regions. The physical arrangement of the Himalayas prevents the cooler air from Central Asia from blowing down into South Asia. In South Asia, the tropical zone extends further north than anywhere else in the world as a result. The warm air from the Bay of Bengal bottlenecks and rushes up beyond Namcha Barwa, the eastern anchor of the Himalayas, and into southern Tibet, providing clear evidence in the Brahmaputra Valley. Every 300 meters of elevation gained causes a 36 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit drop in temperature in the Himalayas. Mountains' erratic physical characteristics, such their broken and jagged shapes, can cause significant temperature fluctuations over relatively short distances. The time of year, the direction of the sun with relation to the mountain face where the place is located, and the mass, or quantity of substance in the mountain, all affect the temperature at a given position. The faces that receive more direct sunlight also experience a bigger buildup of heat because the temperature is directly proportional to the amount of solar energy received. There can be a significant difference in the weather along two of the valley's edges when it is located between two steep mountain sides. The growth season can extend by one more month on the northern side of a mountain that faces south. The mass of the mountain affects the heat budget, or the amount of heat required to change the temperature from the winter minimum to the summer maximum, because it functions as a heat island, absorbing and retaining more heat than the surroundings. Because of the Himalaya's enormous size, many of its peaks have the ability to produce their own weather, with temperature variations from one summit to another and from one face to another, all of which may be very different from the weather on neighboring plateaus or valleys. Precipitation The southwest monsoon has a significant impact on the climate in the Himalayas. The wind that carries the rain is more of a concern than the summertime rain itself. The South Asian seas and the Central Asian continent heat and cool at different rates, which results in significant variations in the atmospheric pressure that exists over each. In the winter, a high-pressure system develops and hangs over Central Asia, causing air to flow across the Himalayas in a southerly direction. The winter winds that blow across South Asia, however, are dry in Central Asia because there isn't a significant supply of water that may be diffused as vapor. 
The Central Asian Plateau heats up more throughout the summer than the Southern Ocean waters. Because of this, the air above it rises steadily, resulting in a low-pressure area. Indian Ocean offshore high-pressure systems force the humid summer air inland in the direction of the low-pressure system. When wet air encounters mountains, it climbs, cools, and then releases its moisture as rain, usually very heavy rain. India and the stratified southern slopes of the Himalayas experience precipitation as a result of the moist summer monsoon winds. The orographic effect is the name given to this forced airlift. Winds The Himalayas enjoy a wide range of climates, from humid subtropical in the foothills to cold and arid desert on the Tibetan side of the range, due to their immense size, enormous altitude range, and complex topology. The monsoon is the most defining aspect of the climate for much of the Himalayas in the regions to the south of the high mountains and is responsible for the majority of the precipitation, while the western disturbance brings winter precipitation, particularly in the west. The southwest monsoon begins in June and lasts through September. Major landslides and substantial transportation issues might be brought on by the monsoon. It limits travel because the trekking and mountaineering seasons are only in April slash May before the monsoon or in October slash November after the monsoon. There are frequently five seasons recognized in Nepal and Sikkim, summer, monsoon, autumn or post-monsoon, winter, and spring. The lower elevations of the Himalayas, which reach mid-elevations in central Nepal, including the Kathmandu Valley, are categorized as CWA, humid subtropical climatic with dry winters by the Koppen climate classification system. Most of the Himalayas higher elevations experience a subtropical highland climate, CWB, with up to 2,000 to 30 millimeters of rainfall throughout the monsoon season in Darjeeling in the east compared to only 975 millimeters during the same period in Shimla in the west, the southwest monsoon's intensity decreases as it advances westward along the range. The Tibetan Himalaya, or the northern side of the Himalayas, is dry, chilly, and typically windswept, especially in the west where it experiences a cold desert environment. The winters are bitterly harsh, and the vegetation is scant and stunted. In the late winter and early spring, snow makes up the majority of the region's precipitation. All over the Himalayas, there are major local climatic impacts. Every 100 m increase in elevation causes a 0.2 to 1.2 degrees Celsius drop in temperature. As a result, there are many different climates, ranging from a practically tropical climate in the foothills to tundra and persistent snow and ice at higher elevations. The topography of the area has an impact on the climate as well. For example, the Upper Mustang, which is protected from monsoon rains by the Annapurna and Dalagiri massifs and has an annual precipitation of about 300 mm, is nearly desert-like due to the rain shadow of the large mountains, while Pakara, which is on the southern side of the massifs, experiences significant rye, 3,900 mm or 150 in a year. The yearly precipitation is therefore generally higher in the east than the west, but regional variations are frequently more significant. The climate of the Tibetan Plateau and the Indian subcontinent are both significantly influenced by the Himalayas. South Asia remains significantly warmer than equivalent temperate zones on the other continents because they stop icy, dry winds from blowing onto the subcontinent. Additionally, it acts as a barrier for the monsoon winds, preventing them from moving north and bringing torrential rain to the Terai region. The Taklamakan and Gobi deserts in Central Asia are thought to have formed in large part as a result of the Himalayas. Satellite images over the past 40 years have shown an acceleration in ice melt across the Himalayas. The Himalayan glaciers would inevitably lose one-third of their surface area even if the lofty 1.5 degrees Celsius target were to be met. Resources There are numerous medical resources in the Himalayas. Since ancient times, people have used plants from the woodlands to treat everything from minor coughs to snake bites. The root, flower, stem, leaves, and bark of the plants are used as treatments for various illnesses. For instance, bronchitis and coughs are treated with an extract of the bark of the Abies pindro tree. An antidote for snake bites is made from leaf and stem paste from an andragon cordifolia plant. 
For skin conditions, a Calicarpa arboreus bark is employed. The Himalayas are home to over a fifth of the world's gymnosperms, angiosperms, and pteridophytes, with more likely to be found. In various Asian and African nations, the majority of the population relies on medicinal plants rather than prescribed drugs and other things. Since so many people in the Himalayas rely only on medical plants for healing, the plants are a significant source of money. This promotes both internal and external regional economic and modern industrial development. The only issue is that villagers are illegally and quickly cutting the Himalayan woods for timber. Thank you for watching. View more our channel videos.